Mm-hmm. Even if you're the opening set, I don't care if you're the opening set or you're the, you're the last set, throw the best fucking show that you possibly can because every chance you get is yeah. a chance to showcase what you're talented and what, or what yeah. you're talented for and what yeah. you're known for. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you're listening to The Real You. Thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary and all of us. My name is Dooley, and this podcast is in partnership with Pocket Change, the social platform built to show the real you. On a day-to-day level, so beyond these kind of epic moments, like how do you kind of, you wake up and like, this is sort of what I need to work on. Like what first comes to mind? This is, um, it's actually really cool that you asked that because a year ago, the answer would have been completely different. Mm -hmm. Um, But Day to day. So my passion is VJing. I absolutely love to VJ. It is so much fun. It's what I love to do. Any chance I get to do it. Yeah, it makes yeah. me happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, And so to get to where I am now for a long time, I would just kind of offer myself up as a VJ. Like, hey, you need someone to come do visuals for you. I'll gladly come and do it for free. I just want to help you throw a good show. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. that's how it started. Yeah. Um, I started doing Thursday nights at church in the basement um because nobody would come do visuals there they would put on some like naked girl on the back of a screen for six hours and like yeah. people would come and throw dubstep to it and it was terrible <laughs> terrible i'm like yeah and yeah so, oh, but- <laughs> yeah like what am i watching you know um, and at the time actually still uh my friends are the ones who promote that and so they asked me to come like hey come on down we can't pay you but if you want to come party with us you mm-hmm. can bj we'll have a good time yeah. it was always a good time yeah yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And so I started doing that for free on Thursdays. And that's how I kind of like started to get known and like recognized. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of like local artists come through the basement, mm-hmm. um, which was actually really good for me because I got to work with a lot of local people, get my name out there, yeah. have fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and so because of that, that kind of like spiraled into other things. Um, yeah. I got introduced to the uh, promoter at your mom's house mm-hmm. who had me come vj sometimes ended up really liking me now i can just go in there whenever i want and vj like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so um i started or i started doing that at your mom's house um because of bp rec i got introduced to another guy his name's jacob he is the uh, production manager at temple nightclub mm-hmm. um one night i showed up uh, just for a friend who was playing and they needed someone to run lights and they're like, Hey, we need someone last minute. You know how to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, not really, but I'll try. And so yeah. I tried and they ended up doing pretty well. And yeah. he's like, Hey, you want to work for us? Yeah. Um, and so I got uh, hired by temple. I do lights and visuals at temple now. <laughs> um, yeah. And so I actually just, just like three weeks ago, got hired by uh, co clubs, which does, all of the like nightclubs in Denver's production. So they do the mm. church, uh, beta, they do vinyl. Um, yeah. I just got hired by them to do VJ. So mm. I got to VJ a few weeks ago upstairs for a main show at church a few times. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, for Rusco was one of them. Like, oh, what? So it was, yeah. So like now it's just weekly, like what's, what's next? Who needs me where kind of a thing. Yeah. 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 Um, I so usually tr- work. Go ahead. Is this able to like pay the bills kind of thing? Like how does that sort of work? Cause I just, I know so many people who kind of have this sort of like a fantasy of this world of like, Oh, I just want to go and do this stuff. And right now you're kind of in that good flow of it. Like, is that sort of a stressful thing or is that like, Oh no, as long as I keep getting booked, I can keep doing it. Or like, you don't have to get into your personal <laughs> finances. No, no, no. Um, you know, actually it's so January 1st, marked the first day that I went full-time with production. I quit all my other side jobs. I quit all my other hustles. Yeah. So January 1st was the beginning of like Alyssa starting the production journey. So 20, was it 20 days ago? 21. Yeah. About 20 days ago. And it's, (laughs) it's, it's actually been really, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, But like, as I'm sitting here, I was actually literally actually thinking about this yesterday. I'm realizing that it was a difficult time to do that because production and just shows in general slow down um between like january and march just because of like the weather it's cold out nobody wants to rage in the cold you know like yeah, yeah, yeah. people don't want to put on shows outside so yeah, yeah yeah um a lot of production slows down and i actually was just like wow this is kind of difficult um yeah. and i kind of understand now what it's like to be in this industry and really be like i need a gig i need a gig i need a gig 
yeah. but I'm not like struggling it, but it is difficult, especially yeah. just right now. Yeah. Um, however, because of all of the work that I did, like between like July to December of last year of just like putting myself out there and mm-hmm. doing whatever I could, mm-hmm. um, that's helped me now because I I'm getting offered like a lot of just local gigs, yeah. 250 bucks here, $400 here. You know? Yeah. 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 So it, it's paying off. It's just not as easy as I thought it was going to be doing this full time. Yeah. But like I said, I, I think I just picked the wrong time. Like mm-hmm. had yeah. I chose like the end of April, you know, I probably would be sex. It's the beginning of summer and things yeah. start to warm up and everybody wants to throw a party. Yeah. But to be know? fair, it's almost kind of, well, sure. Maybe the direct day to day gigs or financial shirts, like it almost gives you time to, build up that still meeting people in the meantime still oh, yeah. getting your practice in there still getting better with the lights and the visuals because i'm going to kind of as the next couple months progress all of a sudden oh wait who are we going to hit up for visual stuff oh my god Alyssa, she did that show and that one and yeah she's i saw one of her things it was awesome like all of yeah. a sudden now you're the person that so it's almost kind of like it comes with a like patient sort of method too I it think. does yeah. exactly and honestly that's that's kind of started to happen. Like Mm -hmm. at the beginning of December, end of November, Mm -hmm. a lot of people are starting to recognize me. They see me at events like, Hey, I know you from this event. You killed it at this event, blah, blah, blah. Um, Which is really, it's like kind of satisfying to hear that. It's like, Hey, you know, people are starting to recognize me and like all of this work I'm putting in is, is actually being noticed. And so it feels good. Also this time that I'm not getting that, like all this time that I'll be working my other jobs, like my dispensary Mm -hmm. job or whatever. Mm-hmm. I am getting a lot more time to come home and just experiment, which I think yeah. is something that I'm really grateful for. I get to come home. Like, so the other day I worked Mercer's show um, mm-hmm. up at uh 10 mile hall up in uh, Frisco. Oh, and awesome. so I, I did visuals yeah. for, it was so sick. I did <laughs> visuals for uh, my buddy, Mark Emport and I did visuals for Carmel and Banco. Oh my God. Um, it was cool as hell, but so I got to work. Fun. It was so sick. I got some to- musical inspirations of mine too and stuff. So like, cause it's also, I go to these type of shows and same, same with you kind of nerding. Like who's, who's doing the lights? Like what? Like I'm like studying their, you know, some people are just, yeah. reading, but I'm almost like studying their sounds, listening to their flow, their set, like all these things. And so to know that you're one of the like magic people behind my like, mystery world that I I'm just sitting there appreciating. It's kind of awesome. to I'll Well, and from a producer standpoint, like a music producer standpoint, I know exactly what you mean because yeah. like when I go to shows, I geek out over the lights of the visuals, but I also find mm-hmm. myself like honing in to what they're playing and being like, Oh, they were doing this, that created this, that did this, that adds to this, you know, and like yeah, in a yeah, musical yeah. aspect. Yeah. And so it's cool because Oh, I enjoy the fact that I do production and stage production because they tie together. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they, it's, it's not one without the other. Yeah. And yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And also being and, able to get, yeah, feel the flow of those things. Like I had a conversation once, um, I think it was via like, Instagram DMs. Like, he was a year and a half ago. I don't, I don't know. Um, but you know, zoo, um, it yeah. was like his lighting person. So same thing. I had gone to a show and it was just like, obviously the music was great, but was just blown away by the whole cohesiveness of everything. It just felt like it was, it wasn't just, Oh, there were visuals playing and lasers. It was the songs were made with the visuals. And then, yeah. And so I, I even like DM the guy. I was like, just like, I discovered who he was and just kind of sent him a nice message. Like that was sick. I don't know if you were a part of this. And he kind of just got back to me like, Oh, thank like, you know, it's kind of an under-recognized thing, I think. And it so is. I kind of asked him a couple of questions about it too. And he's like, Oh, if you're interested, get started with one of these boards things, just find some visuals online, all that. Um, but one of the things he said too is, and it's for some reason it's stuck in my mind. It's like picking colors that match the energy of a song is huge. Huge. And so huge. I, I think about that too. And I'm going to at shows or I think about my own future ideas of stuff is even when I'm labeling stuff in Ableton, I'm like, Oh, this is a blue sound. And I don't know yeah. why, but like, same with like zoo when he kind of lowers it, you take out the hi hats and the things all of a sudden it's like a kick and a bass just boom, boom, boom. And it just almost feels like, okay, now you're sinking underwater and like a deeper blue. And then like the guitar starts to come in, you start to get the rays of yellow, like shining through the, yep. in the lights. And so there's all these little intricate things that initially just as being a part of the show, like, well, so cool. But as you start to think, like feel into those things, it really, um, 
kind of gives us kind of an explosive energy. It's not like it's explosive, but like intimate. it's like immersive. Yeah, it's immer immersive. Yeah, it's, immer it's more immersive feeling um, without it having to be feeling like you're in some 3D, 4D thing, which you are at the same time. But yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just I was always taken by that specific comment he had sent to me about how choosing colors can make or break a, a visual, just even with the lights coming in or the difference between the lasers. And I don't know. It, it just, yeah, I think it's awesome. To... It makes a complete difference. Like, yeah, yeah. it's insane how, like, it, imagine you go to a concert, okay, and there's no lights and no visuals. Yeah, imagine yeah. what that would feel like. I mean, it would, it would still be great. You know, so I did, a, I did a show where that was my, I had no, it was actually uh, one of the Tuesday night black black things, but I was up there and there were no lights and no visuals. So it was straight, just sound and like me, but then I got like all my friends would come and all this stuff. Um, and it was still fun and good, but it was kind of a funny thing looking back on the clips. Cause it's just like, it's just a strange thing, but it's kind of cool. Cause it's just, then it's just music at that it's point. It's just music. Which is interesting. Like, well, and that's that's so cool because I I think each element of production adds a different characteristic of your show. Mm -hmm. If you were to have just music, mm -hmm. it's a whole different vibe. Like imagine you were to go to EDC, okay? Yeah. You take away all production. Yeah. The people up there are playing the best shows of their life. It's not like you need the production. Yeah. yeah. But then you add in things like color scheme, video scheme, and it, yeah. it just takes your show from here to here. Yeah. And yeah. a big part of that, like, so the guy who works for Nexus, his name is Chuck. He mm. is Elenium's lighting designer. He does all of Elenium's shows. Um, mm. And I've talked with him for hours about different types of patterns with lights, different types of colors. What yeah. color does this well? What color is good for this? Mm. And, um, it's it's crazy to like think about the best in the game how mm. much effort they're putting into their production because they know it takes their show from here to here yeah 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 you yeah. know and even having to vary that too like not just playing the same shows every time and also yeah. like knowing that there's fans who are wa watching that artist five times a year some people like <laughs> fucking dozens of times a year follow them around yeah. and stuff but so even kind of knowing that like coming up like you said that it's time to experiment and try new things and the artist is taking stuff in new directions um like the musical side of it um yeah yeah well it was cool like the other day when i was working uh at that immersive show i got to work with this guy joe who is uh immersive's vj mm -hmm. and i do this a lot and i think a lot of producers do this a lot i'm sure a lot of visual artists do this a lot mm -hmm. when they go to shows they see something that inspires them yeah like whoa this song or this transition inspired me because whatever yeah um well i i got to sit behind him and watch him throw immersive's visual set mm. and it was so minimal and, but so effective and yeah to me that is so cool like mm. he got for this one song um i don't remember what song it was he got this video of a girl off of youtube doing an interpretive dance in a warehouse yeah and he just he played it during the song and added like very minimal effects to it and i was like it doesn't have to be as complicated as I think it does. It doesn't yeah. have to be all this crazy animation and all this crazy shit that morphs together. It's like mm -hmm. literally something as simple as a person dancing in a warehouse that makes this song yeah. and this experience right now absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I always and, um, think of, um, with so I've I've seen um, Sam Charles the first, which you know RP and everything, but yeah. he was one of the biggest inspirations not only musically but um, I I went to his festival in Wyoming and uh the visual side and i've actually seen him literally two so there's four there's four times now that i've seen him and each of the time you know he's got kind of that like nature like glitch nature basically yeah but the beauty of it is his music has such this kind of almost ethereal like it has a subtle glitch factor to it but it's got this natural beauty to like almost effortlessness yeah. even though it's so complex and it's in its production but um it sounds and feels like it's effortlessly flowing. And yeah. then when the visual part, it's, I actually use that like when I've tried to do some visuals on, on my own stuff or work with some people being like, Oh, here's some stuff that's inspired me. Like it's his simple selection of what nature clips, just knowing how beautiful nature is in general, if you kind of, you know, get the right shots and whatnot. And then yeah. just some of these subtle pickings of them and, you know, color coding them a little bit and then glitching them. And it's like, you know, I've seen the shows where it's these massive, super trippy, 
hell yeah. extreme animated things and then to go to that and kind of feel like i'm entering into like what feels like this world but he's kind of taking you into his version of that through yeah. his beauty of his music um and so yeah i guess it's it's just to comment in on the the simplicity of it's also just taste and selection where it's not like the most complex is the best but how the things complement each other um, exactly so yeah that's just a big piece of discovery for myself too as i'm thinking about the next steps of okay i've got this sort of vibe with my music stuff like what is that to me visually like about these jungle elements like there are so many beautiful and crazy parts of the jungle just the animals being animals and like little shots so i'm like I'm even I just constantly think about this kind of stuff. I think it's really well, and that is what's going to take you to the next level as, as a, as a performer. Um, yeah. I talk about this with Emmy all the time, seriously, yeah. all the time, mm-hmm. uh, because as she started to develop as a producer, she started to develop this vision of what she wants her show to look like. Yeah. And it's not stupid to be like, you know what, when I'm playing main stage at Lost Lands, this is what I want my, my stage to look like. And we're working yeah. on that now because yeah it will only make your journey as a producer better. Mm, And um, and I I tell this to everybody, Mm. any any of my friends, I tell this to, any chance you get to play where you can have someone show up and do video for you, Mm -hmm. even if you're the opening set, I don't care if you're the opening set or you're you're the last set, throw the best fucking show that you possibly can because every chance you get is a chance to showcase what you're talented and what, or what you're talented for and what you're known for. And, um, we talk about hers all the time. Like she has this vision of, she makes a lot of like really beautiful ethereal wubby sounds. And like, yeah. she is inspired by Asian culture. And so mm-hmm. a lot of hers is the dojo and it's like the dojo experience, what it's like to go to the dojo and yeah. be in like immersed in this beautiful Asian scenery and all of these different cultural things that mean a lot to her, but also inspire her music. And so yeah, 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 yeah. we've tied a lot of that into her visual pack and her, her visual experience, because that's what her music is about. And it, I can't even tell you going to see someone like I've done lots, like probably 50 over 50 or 60 shows in the past six months. And like yeah. watching a VJ play whatever they want mm-hmm. versus a VJ playing content that they're given mm-hmm is a completely different experience yeah 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 yeah. which is why i like i always offer to do my friends stuff like Mm -hmm. because i want my friends to show up and like get the chance that they're given Mm -hmm. to use it as best as they can and like like i said i don't care if you're the first slot or the last slot like no show up i i think about that too with not just the visual side but the every set or chance you have to be either performing or in front of people or like like that in itself is a massive privilege that you almost yes. forget about. Um, like I think about years ago when I was first getting, so I, I didn't even start on Ableton. I started on machine is the, the beat pad. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was, <laughs> I was making like looped hip hop beats pretty like almost a completely different style now, but there's all these kind of overlaps. You, if you visit some of my old stuff, but, um, but with that, it's like, I still, I can't forget the moments then being like, Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine what it'd be like one day to like play this on a big system. And yeah, let alone a big system, it's a massive show. It's just a set of speakers in front of people. 